Hello YouTube, thank you for coming back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about installing Arch Linux from scratch. I know there are more videos on this matter on YouTube, but I will uh, try to keep this one as short and easy to understand as possible and not make it a multi-part series as most other YouTubers have. The first thing that we're going to do after booting from the live CD is going to run the lsblk command. This is going to show you all the connected storage devices on the computer right now. We are looking after our hard disk. In my case, it is SDA. In your case, it might be B or C or whatever. You need to keep in mind this letter because you're going to use it later. For example, the first command that we're going to run after this is parted slash dev slash SDA in my case. We need to make a partition table with MS-DOS. So make label MS-DOS. Now we're going to make some partitions. The first partition we are going to create is going to be a primary XT4 partition that's going to span from 1 megabyte up till 26 gigabytes. You can change this depending on how big your hard drive is. Now we need to create a boot flag onto our new partition. So set one boot on. When this is done, we need to create our swap partition. Again, depending on your system specifications, this might be bigger or smaller than mine. So the way I did it was make part primary Linux swap and then I made it from those 26 gigabytes that I wrote earlier up till 100% of my hard drive space. When that is done, we need to make it swappable. So make swap slash dev slash sd. And now the letter that you remembered in the first place, in my case, a. And then the number two, because this is the second partition we created on the hard drive. Then we need to turn it on. So it's going to be swap on and then the same path. So slash dev slash sda2 in my case. Let's also not forget about the root partition. So to mount it, we need to write mount slash dev slash sda1 in my case, and then slash mnt. We're going to mount it at the slash mnt folder. In the next step, we're going to edit the mirror list. This is going to help us install the system files later on. So I'm going to edit it with vim. So in my case, it's vim slash etc slash pacman dot d slash mirror list. It is going to be pretty much the same for you, but you can use whatever else you want instead of Vim. Now what you need to do in this file is to actually get the closest mirror to your geographical place, then copy it and make it the first mirror inside the mirror list. In my case, I'm not going to bother with that because the first mirror is already pretty close to me, so I'm going to let it like that. Let's install the system packages. So we're going to write backtrap i slash mnt, then write base and then also base hyphen devel. This is going to take some time, so grab a cup of tea and relax for a minute. Once all the packages are installed, we're going to generate the fstab file. We'll be using UUIDs to identify each partition, which are more reliable than labels. So to do this, we're going to write gen fstab, then hyphen u, then slash mount, and we're going to write this into slash mnt slash etc slash fstab. Now the system is installed, so we need to get into it using chroot. So arch hyphen ch root slash mnt and then slash bin slash bash this is going to indicate that we are going to use the bash shell now to select our language i'm going to use vim to edit a file but you can use whatever you want so vim slash etc slash local dot gen here you are going to look after your language and uncomment it in my case i'm going to uncomment the en underscore gb dot utf hyphen 8 Now we need to generate the actual locale. So locale hyphen gen. Then we are going to echo lang, so lang equals 
and now the language you actually chose in the file above. So in my case it's going to be en underscore gb dot utf hyphen 8 and we're going to write this into slash etc slash locale dot conf when that is done we're going to export lang equals and again the same language that you chose previously Now that we're finished with the language, we need to actually select a time zone. So to get this working, we need to write EZ select. This is a pretty simple process. You're just going to select the region you are from and then it's going to create everything for you. When that is done, we need to create a sim link to it. So to do that, we need to write ln hyphen s and then we're going to go to slash usr slash share slash zone info and then slash the zone you actually chose, in my case it's going to be Europe, and then slash now the city that you actually chose, in my case it's going to be London, and we're going to write this into slash etc slash local time. Get your hardware clock synchronized with this, we're going to write hw clock, and then double hyphens is to hc, and then double hyphens utc. Now to configure a bootloader, we're going to use grub, we're going to get that from Pacman. Pacman hyphen s grub and we're also going to need os hyphen prober. When that is done, we're going to write grub hyphen install and then double hyphen recheck space double hyphen target equals and in my case I'm going to write i386 hyphen pc. We're going to write this into the hard disk. So in my case it is slash dev slash sda remember that's the letter you chose in the first part of this tutorial to configure grub we're going to do grub hyphen make config and then hyphen o space slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg now that we have a bootloader let's set up a host name so what we're going to do is write echo and then whatever host name you want to give it to your computer And then we're going to write this into slash etc slash hostname. When that is done, let's also write a default password. So to do that, write passwd. This is going to write a password for the root user. Choose whatever password you want and keep it in mind. Now we're going to exit out of ch root, so write exit. To unmount the partition we were working on, we're going to write umount hyphen r slash mnt. In my case, I wrote unmount, so it autocorrected me. When that is done, we're going to shut down the computer and then restart it without the Arch Linux installation CD. The first thing we're going to do after booting back up is going to find out if we have internet. So write IP link and then this is going to give you the information about what is your internet interface. In my case it is ENP0S3, so keep that in mind for you. Now we're going to write the command systemctl then start and then dhcpcd add and now I'm going to write my interface, in this case ENP0S3.service. Customize that to your own liking. Now when that is done we're going to run pretty much the same command but instead of start we're going to write enable. Now let's test out if the internet works using the command ping. It does indeed work, which is a good sign. So the next thing we're going to do is actually add a user to this computer instead of using always the root user. To do this, you need to write user add hyphen m hyphen capital G and then we're going to specify that we want the user to be added inside the wheel and also the users group and then hyphen s slash bin slash bash and then also a name. This is going to create a user named Teamscar in my case that has the bash shell and it is part of the wheel and also the users group. Now to create a password for him I'm going to use passwd and then the name of the account, so in this case Teamscar.
also install sudo. This is going to help us run admin commands from our user. Also to do this, we need to edit a file named vsudo. So, write the command editor equals, now whichever program we want to use, I'm going to use vi, and then the name vi sudo. Here you're looking after a line, something like will all equals all and then all. Uncomment that line. After that you just need to save and quit. Now let's edit the pacman config file. So in this case it's going to be vim slash etc slash pacman.conf. Here we're looking after a multi-lib config, so we need to enable that, because that is going to help us run 32-bit software on a 64-bit computer. I'm also going to add another repository at the end. That repository allows us to use Yaort. That is another program that is going to help us compile stuff from the Arch user repository. It's a very useful program to have, and also one of the biggest reasons to actually use Arch Linux. To enable it, go to the last line in the config file and write as I do so. Arch Linux FR, so it's France, and then SIG level is going to be equal to never, and the server is going to be equal to HTTP dot slash slash repo dot arch Linux dot FR slash dollar arch. Now we're going to install Yaourt, so to do this, we're going to write sudo pacman hyphen sy. Space Yaourt. Sorry for my mistake there. Something that everybody is going to need on Arch Linux is a X server. So to do that, we are going to install Xorg server, also Xorg server utils. So do as I do in the video. Now, if you want to continue from here on, you can install whatever window manager you want. I recommend you also go watch my other video about WM utils, and maybe why not set that up. I'm not going to dive into that because it's going to make the video too long, and you already have another video explaining that. Now, the last thing that I'm going to show you is how to use Yaourt. It's pretty simple. So all you have to do is write Yaourt, then hyphen S, and then the program you need to install. In my case, I'm going to install ScreenFetch. When that is done, you just run the program. It's going to display the system information. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out my last week's video. I'm going to see you next Saturday. Until then, have fun thinking.